Run it up, to run it back. Run it up, to run it back. Run it up. Well, happy Thursday morning. This is Run It Back right here on FanDuel TV. We are missing Shams today. Be Feeling well a little under the weather. Films. Yep. Get better. Get well soon. Uh, but we have allergies being represented up here uh, quite well. So Chandler P, Lou Will, we've got a lot of basketball to get to. A lot of basketball, some shenanigans as well. But we are going to start with the Warriors. They got to win. Uh, beat the Magic 101 93. We'll get to the Draymond stuff in a second. Steph Curry had 17, 10 assists. Uh, Andrew Wiggins mm. with 23 points. And Cole Anthony, 26 points off the bench. But as per usual, we're talking about Draymond for not great reasons. Uh, less than four minutes into this one, I thought it was a typo when I saw it all happening. Uh, he was ejected, two T's. This is career high, fourth ejection of the season. The night after, he puts Patty Mills in a headlock. Um, guys, and by the way, this, this is the part that broke my heart. You made Steph Curry cry, dude. Literally. Now during who's defending? Let me hear who's defending Draymond today, go. Today's not the day. <laughs> today is I not, I didn't today see is not the either. day. I was, uh, I didn't, I didn't like that. Based on, you know, early in the game, the score was six to six. Yeah, come nothing, on. Nothing should be this serious in the game where it gets under your skin. Dre, you wasn't even part of that play. You know what I mean? But seeing him, seeing his reaction when he, when he's talking to the ref, it looks like something was said to him that he probably disagreed with mm -mm. Um, in that conversation. He took exception to it. All in all, we got to look at big picture, you know? I've, I've been an advocate of Draymond. I've, I've defended, mm -hmm. I've said, I, if my enforcer is gonna be an enforcer, I want him to be himself at all times. I'm gonna scale that back a little bit because you know, you're getting to a point in the season where these games are important. And it shows in Steph Curry's reaction. You know, yeah. he, he was emotional about that because it means so much to this, to this organization to to continue on and Draymond is a big part of that and he got to start carrying himself like that. Obviously he knows that, but when you're getting kicked out of the game four minutes in, this is detrimental to what you're trying to do. Now you're, it's, it's, it's being disruptive. So I, I, I didn't like that. I didn't like, I didn't like the, the public display of frustration that it, it put Steph Curry in a position to show. Um, in a position that it put the Warriors in, even though they got a good, a big win, I, I didn't like this. Yeah, my problem, it's, it's been disruptive. This isn't new, this is a, it's a tired act, and, and the juice yeah. isn't worth the squeeze to me, and I don't think it's worth it to them either. You can see clearly, I like that, one. I like that one. Clearly you like can that. see that Steph Curry, he's never, I've never seen him this frustrated in his entire career. Ever. A loss, losing in the postseason, anything. So, in my opinion, he's done with Draymond Green. He is over the, the antics. He understands how valuable he is to this team. And four, five, six minutes, whatever it was, into the game, at this point of the season where you're fighting for your life, you're fighting for a, a possibility of getting into a play-in. Well, meanwhile, the hottest team in the NBA is running 10 straight. Right. And you're arguably your second most valuable player is getting tossed again after getting, uh, you know, away with murder the night before Thank of you. choking out Patty Mills. It's just, it's a tired act and it's exhausting. And again, like Lou always says, this is who he is. This is who, that's fine. And I understand the whole emotional aspect and he brings energy to his team and he is that spark. And they are a lot better when he's on the floor. Sure. The problem is when he keeps doing shit like this, he's not gonna be on the floor. So that is when now you're being selfish, you're being irrational, you're being way too emotional and you're costing your team wins, you're costing your franchise money, you're costing yourself, all that too. So it's just a bad look. And there's no way in my eyes that he's on the Golden State Warriors next year. I don't know how that's gonna happen, but like Steph Curry is over it, man. I mean, if you lose Steph Curry, you know what I saw there and it kind of was heartbreaking. It was just like, that's his friend first and foremost. And it was almost like the realization hit Steph in that moment, like, this dude will never change. I, I don't care how it. many therapists you have yeah. on retainer or how many days you're going you, to well, You, Not you know change. what it did for me? It, it put everything Steve Kerr has been saying in perspective about we can't expect Steph Curry to carry the load no. on every single thing. You saw it. He, had, he was frustrated. He's tired. He's kicking chairs. We've never seen this side of Steph Curry, and, and it's getting heavy. You know, the expectations are getting heavy and he's dealing with a lot of, I don't want to say he's dealing with it alone because, you know, this is obviously a team sport and guys are contributing, but, you know, publicly this looks like it's getting to be a lot for Steph Curry and I, and I hated to see that. And think about it, Steve Curry saying we can't keep putting this much on Steph Curry, so Draymond Green, let's get tossed within five minutes of the game and it's put even cool. more on Steph Curry. Selfish. It's like, 
it's selfish. He's not listening. He's not, I don't care how intense, how emotional you are as a player. You're still, you have to be under control. You're an adult. You're a, you're a man. You're a father. Like you have to get your he feelings in check. control himself. Or it's going to cost your team and your career. Like, and, and again, I think he still has value where other teams will maybe take a flyer on him. He's going to be a Hall of Fame player based on what he's done his career up to this point. But these are all self-inflicted wounds. It. And it's, it's disgusting that we're sitting here talking about this when they had a huge win last night in the most important part of the season. And we're talking about how this guy got tossed again and did something crazy that we're all just not even surprised, but yet somehow still surprised. I so. mean, it's I, look, I spent an entire day. Think about mocking. how annoyed we are right now. And you, what do you yeah, think that locker imagine, room's thinking? Too? Well, what do you think, you here, I mean? Steph was asked about it after the game. Here he is. What did, what did you think of the Draymond injection? Um, all I say is we need, we need him. He knows that. We all know that. Um, so whatever it takes to keep him on the floor, um, he'll be available. That's what's got to happen. Uh, the guy is has the, one of the greatest li lives ever. He's healthy. For sure. He's happy. He's so loaded, wildly rich. <laughs> He's devastated. He's so upset because his teammate, like you said, his friend can't keep his emotions in check and yeah. play the game of basketball. That's all you got to do. And this dude is getting help, got help. I don't know if it's a continuing process or if it was a one-off just to, to tell the league he's good. But to not be able, I mean, we all have anger management issues to a point, right? Whether it come out in the car or whatever. <laughs> His is all the time on the court, and he cannot help himself. I'm going I'm to give him some credit. You think he got help? I ain't really tripping on the help because this is an on-court thing. He doesn't have a history of behavior. But that's behavior. his job. Right, but he doesn't have a history of behavioral issues when it comes to his personal life. Yeah. I give him credit for that. So sometimes we start talking about, you know, he needs to help and all of that stuff. I, I kind of take a cut off of that because some of this is theater, right? Some of this it's is... It's not good theater. I, I'm, I'm with you, but some of it is part of the entertainment side, and we're commenting on it based on entertainment. People are getting hurt, you know. You, you know, so you know, smacked him a few faces, and you know, yeah. put a couple headlocks in a couple casualties. choke holes. Don't get, don't get me wrong, but you know, I just want to see him carry himself to a, to a place where you hate for their dynasty and everything that they've been able to accomplish be marred with this type of attention. You know what and I'm it saying? is, and that's my thing. Like Lou said too, it's hmm. it's tricky for me and Lou because we played basketball and we know these guys. So yeah. we know Draymond Green off the court. We know him on the court. Draymond's he, a friend. He's he annoys the shit out of us on the court too. But <laughs> off the court, the guy is cool. The guy is a he guy's a solid, good dude that I've actually enjoyed my time with off the court. So I try and tread lightly when he when he behaves like this on the court. But man, it's like it's like I'm like a parent. I'm not mad. I'm but, disappointed. But as a, like, yeah. How many as a times player, does it have to happen? But as a player, I get it. As I get a the player, fire, as I get a the former spark. teammate, you like, bro, enough is enough. Come on, like if I'm because in that Steph locker room, the, the, the Famer, problem right? is he's the vet on that locker room, and it's yes. not going to be Clay, and it's not going to be Steph Curry that's going to grab him by his jersey today and say, bro, enough. No one in that locker room is going to do that. There is no vet on that team. There's no Iguodala anymore. There's no Chris Paul should do it, but he's new. He's the new. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it, it's it's there's he is that enforcer. So there is no one to check. Draymond in that locker room, which is another hard part because Steph Curry and Klay Thompson are two of the nicest people in the world. Also, they're not they gonna, do, they, they, they don't want there. confrontation. They've been there. They've had a hell of a career, Hall of Fame career with Draymond Green. He's a huge part of that. But again, there, there's it's it's not like he's this young guy that needs tutelage and, men, and a mentor. No. He's a, he is the vet. Like, he's the oh, don't, you get your shit together. That's what this and is. And you know what it's, kind of example like Trace about Jackson and Just Kaminga. Kaminga, Trace Jackson, like, do you want those guys following this guy's lead no. for the next five, seven years? You know what I mean? So it's tough. When, and this puts a lot of pressure on Mike Dunleavy this summer. He's got so many decisions to make. What does he do with Wiggins? Is Chris Paul? And now their biggest decision is probably this guy just based off his behavior and how he's acting. Because don't we think he's there still because Kerr and Curry? Are well, like, and no, you we see, vouch. when he just came back from his first suspension from something else that he did, their team plays much better when Draymond Green is on the floor. And no doubt he is their best defensive player. He is their catalyst. He's That's a vocal leader. He, even offensively, he knows how to get them. He knows how to play really well off Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. The problem is when you continue to do things like this, it's like uh, Steve Kerr has every right to shut him down for the season. Like, you know what I mean? He's something dramatic. Cut him, wave him, get him a buyout, do something. Ooh. But how many other times, how many strikes does this guy get? The guy's a cat. 37. Yeah, like. Well, you know why they don't do that? 
Because they need them. Besides, well, yes, but they're fighting still. And they're literally have the they they could they they could not make the The Rockets play. weren't doing what they were doing. I think they would. Besides the Jordan Poole issue, everything that he's doing is against his opponents. I think that gives them some leeway still with the Golden State Warriors, where they don't bench him, where they they don't suspend him in house because he's not he's being detrimental to the team, but he's not being detrimental to his own teammates. And that's what we're saying. Like we we know he's a good guy. So Steph and Clay and they these guys have been him. around. They love him off yeah. the court. They love him. He's a great dude off the court. It's just uh, that's enough. why the reaction on Steph was it was like wow because you like, could tell you this felt is like more that than bad like, for Steph Curry. I, like you I, made him cry. Um, but he did do a night night celebration. We did get a great night night celebration out of Steph. Um, the whole length of the court after hitting this uh, this three that put things away. Um, <laughs> I mean, just a lot of <laughs> that's a long night night celebration. Yeah, and this is what we should be talking about. This is what this is the Warriors fighting for their life, beating the fifth seed in the Eastern Conference on the road with Draymond getting suspended, <laughs> overcoming all those obstacles. So this is what we should have started the show with. This is what we should be talking about. We should be talking about how solid of a game Wiggins had. 23 points, finally found his rhythm. He got you frustrated, bro. I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I, it's just, it's ridiculous. Like, it's, they, I mean, like, good. we have a we have a lot of things to talk about, because so we should be thankful for guys like Draymond Green, but Jesus, like, uh, stop. It's irritating, I think, as a just a fan of the game, because Draymond's not the guy on this team. Steph is. Steph, Steph arguably has changed the NBA in his time that he's been in this league. The idea that you, as not the guy... Is constantly the one bringing all this he's drama. Not the guy. He's not. He's well. Steph is the lead singer. One hundred percent. But he's he's in the band. He's in the band. Draymond, I won't Draymond argue that. The problem. But he, you know what? He can be replaced as a part of the yeah. band. He's the not problem Steph. is he's not the guy and he's not the future. So he's kind of right in the middle where he is replaceable. And and they have decisions to make this summer. And if I was a betting man. That's a hot take, Chandler. I mean, I can't imagine how it. Could it. How could it not be? Unless like, he retires, which I don't think that's no, happening. I just think that's just, that's just how the game goes. That's just so you think he's goes. out too at the end of the season? I, I think at this point you have to you have to address it, and I and I think he's aware of that as well. Uh, you know, he's See? even made comments kind of similar to that even before he got his deal. That you know maybe this is the, the end of the road. Did he tweet? Is that the deal? Draymond had to. By the way, you could tell he was trying to be nice to Steph because he was waiting for him afterwards. Um, it's too late. He's already cried on the thing. Did he tweet after the game? Is that what I'm seeing right here? Because yeah, I'd like I... to see a Draymond tweet. And say, oh, holding it down. I just, I'm telling there's no <laughs> awareness at all. There's no accountability. Nothing. Not, hey, sorry this I let you guys a, down again. This is a, like a classic deflection. Man, I want to see the... Uh, the schooling of these therapists. <laughs> I'd like to know where they went to school. That certificate. <laughs> I'd like to see your degrees. Please, ma'ams and sir. Um, we had another big game last night. This was a good one. Don't look now, Lou. Clippers. Is it happening? Sixers, Clippers. They beat them. 108, 107. This was Harden's first game back in Philly, and yeah, he got booed. Uh, he had 16 and 14. Kawhi Leonard, 17 and 9. Tyrese Maxey doing it all with 26 points, but Sixers coach Nick Nurse was furious. Um, there was a no call on the final play. He's out there, things are happening. It, talk to me, is it a foul? Should it have been uh, called a foul? I mean, the only way I think it might be a foul is if he's in the circle, which I don't think he is. He Ooh. goes up pretty good vertical. The <laughs> problem where I think it was a foul was the first play, the end of regulation. Uh, right. Or the one where he went from the left baseline. but. Again, this is, there's some contact there, but. They again. said, the refs admitted after, by the way, I don't know the law. They remitted after the game. Yep, should have been a foul. Yeah, like it's, 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 yeah. there's contact, but I think yeah, a I lot of times at the, the, at the end of the game, refs try and let, let play you on. play. Let, they try and yeah. let them play on. And as, an, as, a, as a player, <laughs> you try and make them force their hand to blow the whistle. So this is kind mm -hmm. of a, both trying to do their job, trying to let them play, trying to get the contact, and it could have went either way. And it's scary because if that whistle is blown, the Clippers. Right. And, you gotta, and, true. and you got to think, it took us four or five times for us to have a solid opinion. Like, uh, and we're still like, uh, mm. I, I don't yeah, know. I still so, don't know. So real time, right there, you let them play. Obviously, somebody's gonna be gonna get the short end of the stick. Last night it was the Sixers. Good win for the Clippers. Yeah, it was Nick it Nurse. It, it was also one of my and I understand the hypocrisy I'm about to do here that I'm gonna love this next video and poop on Draymond. Different deliveries, because Kelly Oubre. No. Way. Uh, yep. No you a B. You're a B. You're a B. And then, and then, <laughs> you're cool. 
<laughs> Who's next? This man. It's my face. Okay. He went all look, of them. And he said, okay, look. He okay, got okay. Making sure you heard me? All and right. then moves on to their mothers <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> he does move on to their mothers afterwards. And says, afterwards. your mom's a bee. Yep. I mean, your mom's she a might so, be a bee. Listen, we don't know. So Kelly Oubre doesn't have a history of this type of thing, Co right? Yes. If this is Draymond Green, the world blows up Trouble. today. And he's so caught. Like, the, I'm telling you, the delivery. It's perfectly done. The question, <laughs> however, today is the over/under on the fine. Hey, We're gonna start guessing. I thought it was. I thought the over was gonna be 50. Now watching this, this might be 75. I think oh, it's I, over. This is. You 20, think it's over 50 for this sure? This is 25 per bitch. All right, 25 per bitch. What about, what about the mombies? Like, could, oh, he those threw count? some moms. Yeah, in he there? got some moms. What do you in mean? There? He said, "You're a bitch. You're a bitch. You're a bitch." And then he goes back and says, "Your mom. <laughs> your mom. Your mom is the best." God, it's my favorite. Did he? <laughs> yes, bro. He's six. He dropped six he different did. insults. There were six. six individually, eight. that's one fifty. <laughs> You think it's what? One? That's the, that's the math. It's, I that's can't the wait. Math. That's 25 a piece. Here's the thing with this, too, which is hilarious for watching it. It's funny. You think these refs are going to forget this next time they ref? Oh, no. He's, he's, he's like, this no. is he's going to have an issue. Yeah, At the end of the day, issue. those guys are human. You basically just win it. <laughs> it's, the, it's the, you're a bitch, okay? Yeah, that's, that kills got me. It checks out. Okay, got, and yep. also your mom. And then your forget. friend and your. <laughs> but <laughs> listen, if you know you're going to get fined, go. Go get your it. money's worth. Just run. Yeah, get your money's worth. Like after in. you get your second tee, you yeah, get like that get, free 10 seconds get a, of going you get a little angry. Oh, God. And then he's got the. He's uh, on fire last you night. You know what, though? And then he, he get, apologized afterwards. He did. I think uh, we'll soften the blow a little bit. So when you, when you do all of this and then you apologize, yeah. Michelle, you're not standing on business. Mm. Oh, so. Oh, interesting. So if Draymond a, stands on business. Draymond is standing. Is that good, though? I feel like that's not good here. Precisely. Draymond stands on business. Well, now I don't know. There you go. There you have it. Okay, well, there was a final 45 seconds. Um, Kawhi Leonard with a bucket and one to give the Clippers the lead. Then the game winning and one. And then the game saving block, which is what you saw in the, the controversial play there at the end. Um, yeah, claw. Let me ask you this. Mm. When we get to see this Kawhi, it's just, it's a beautiful thing. How many dudes are you taking over a healthy Kawhi come post? That's such an interesting question. And that's what <laughs> makes the, that's what makes the Clippers dangerous. Because if I'm not going to take Kawhi, I'm probably going to take a couple guys that's wearing the same uniform that he has on. I like I like Paul George in the closing moments of games. Let's not forget who James Harden is in the closing moments okay. of games when you put that ball in his hands. Which game? So to see this, <laughs> <stop>. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> sorry. So to see this version of Kawhi, this is a good sign. They got away with a win last night, foul or no foul. But moving forward, if he's in attack mode like this, this at the end of games on the offensive and defensive end. That makes the Clippers a dangerous team. Yeah, and it's safe to say he's back. He's averaging 24, 6, and 4. That's, that's a great season for Kawhi Leonard. He's played a lot. Of, he's played 66 games, so he's he's been available. And that's been his, kind of his issue for over the last couple of years where when he's on the floor, and this year, this is the best he's looked. He looks strong. Mm. He looks healthy. He looks like he he's back to that two-way player that he was in San Antonio and he was in Toronto that year. So uh, this is huge for him because he is one of the best two-way players of all time. And when he's healthy like this, he can be still a dominant force, especially with the supporting cast that he has. So like the Suns, like the Clippers, this is why they are scary because they have this firepower and they have this depth and capability of a great bench, bigs, guard play, can score in multiple ways. So they're dangerous only if he's healthy. I that's fair. I mean, that's what we're all hoping to. Only? Only if he's healthy. If he goes down, it's going to be a dogfight to get out of the first round. I think it's going to be tough. Think about it. They're, 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 they're going to they're have a tough series regardless. With yeah, it, I, I think with we'll him it's going to be it tough. Another. All right, fine. Okay, well, how about James Harden? Because as we mentioned, it was his big return to Philadelphia um, since the trade. Crowd reaction? About right. <clears throat> now to my starter, the six line from Arizona, number one, James Harden. I will always love a healthy I love boo. It. I, I just, I love it. I love it. The I got no problem unified. with this. Yeah, this is... I love it. This is Philadelphia. I spent yeah. my first eight years there. My first time coming back, I was terrified. Because <laughs> I, I, they have a history of booing everybody. Well, did you piss everyone off? Well, no, I got a standing note. Okay, I, so I, I got a, I got a standing note, but this is also a city who threw snowballs at Santa Claus. Yeah, they did not. Yeah. You know, they, <laughs> they threw snowballs at Santa Claus. This is a, this is a sports town that <laughs> if they feel slighted in the least bit, they're going to make sure you know that. <clears throat> and obviously, had the way that James Harden departed, they was going to let him know. And this is, this is the beauty of sports, right, and fans. When I left Houston, I went to Dallas, and I went back, they booed the shit out of me. <laughs> then they played a video, they cheered, and as soon as that video ended, guess what? Yeah. It went right oh, back by to the way, me. Thank you. I'm glad you said that. 
I got a standing O. Ooh. And then when the game started, the first time I touched the ball, Boom. Game back everybody on, yeah. booed me. There is a fair. certain there's a Loves protocol with yeah. fans, because I am the fan in this, and I, I love booing. By the you way, I feel like you get booed. <laughs> I get booed. You kidding me? I'll go to I'll go to I'll go to Joe and the Juice here and get booed. <laughs> yeah, I could I could see that. Ooh, break time. When we come back, comedian and Portland Trailblazer fan, we found one. E. Carmel joins the show. Talk to Blazer hat is dope. That is a good hat. I know. Run it back, yeah. Run it all. The run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all. Oh, we got a funny man on with us now. Ian Carmel joins us, stand-up comic, host of All Fantasy Everything, the podcast. What's up, Ian? Okay, well, we're going to start right with your hat, right? Because you are yes. a Blazers fan. You grew up in Oregon, so if people are wondering how that happens, that's how it happens. Um, and they've been in tank <laughs> mode for a minute. What do you do with seasons like that? Because as a Spurs fan, I get it. it. It happens. What do you do with these types of seasons? You learn to love the likes of Duwop Reith and uh, <laughs> Delano Banton. Who? And you convince yourself that these are going to be major parts of a, a uh, eventual championship winning team. Takes you time. lie to yourself. You lie. Yeah. You spend it years time. lying to yourself. It takes time. It takes time. <laughs> it does. It does. And you and you end up getting really into uh, what is apparently going to be the worst draft class in years. I know. <laughs> you guys really didn't time that well, did you? Future is no, bright. We, <laughs> the, the future is bright. That future just might not start until 2026. <laughs> <laughs> Future's bright. I'm in the same boat, but we have Wemby. Go on, sorry. That's yeah, true. you're not in the same boat at all. I don't want to hear that. I mean, it sounded yeah. good as I you're started to You're in a yacht. Say, He's in a goddamn canoe. You're right. You're just yeah, sort of like I'm, on a tube floating by. I'm in, a, I'm in a tube, and there was a chance I was going to get that yacht, too. Like last year, there was like, you know, this yacht is up for yacht. grabs. I know. You might have, because I cry, Ian, I legit cried when they opened the envelope, and it was Spurs are getting the number one. Legitimately had tears of joy coming down my face like like it had already like we'd won a championship already how's that oh i remember uh the feeling because it happened when we drafted greg odin so i'm very <laughs> familiar oh, no, with that feeling of excitement that you're uh, about to uh, you know join forces with a franchise altering center so you I, know, I, I, I know <laughs> it's exactly it well. the same <laughs> and so big news in portland this past off season they move on from damian lillard uh, what was your take on that? Did, did it kind of run its course? Did you think that was the right move at the time? Did you want him to keep him? What, what was your thoughts on that? I, w I was grateful that, that we would always have the rap albums uh, <laughs> to, to remember our time together. <laughs> uh, I, you know, honestly, I was, I was happy for him. It felt like an amicable divorce, even, even if it got a little weird with where he was going to be moving after the, uh, <laughs> the divorce was completed. But... I think Portland will always love Damian Lillard. I mean, that's that that's my favorite player who I got to watch throughout my career uh, as a Portland Trail Blazers fan. And yeah, it was it was time for him to go. You know, he he he'd taken us as far as as we were gonna go. The team clearly couldn't put winning pieces around him in a way that he needed to have around him at that point. So yeah. I think every, not a single Portland Trail Blazer fan who doesn't wish him well. Then, We're also all a little bit Milwaukee Bucks fans. So now do you still follow, do you still cheer for him in Milwaukee as long as they're not playing the Trail Blazers? Or Whoever you, cheers or you for the Knicks. You're off of That's a great, <laughs> it's a great I, We're cheering for him. I swear See? I swear to God, Portland, class, yeah, we are class such. Class. Yeah. You're class at. We're a little bit class X. We are a little bit have like a parasocial relationship. Maybe we're like a little bit of like a cuck fan base too because of it. But <laughs> maybe that. <laughs> everyone, everyone in Portland, they do. There's a little bit of Schadenfreude, you know what I mean, when the Doc Rivers thing was first getting off the ground. But now that they're clicking, they're they're, they're moving, they're winning a lot of games. <laughs> I think everyone would like to see see it happen for Damian Lillard. By the way, revealing moment for Lou, who said, who roots for their ex? So now we know a little bit more about Lou Will than we did yesterday. Yeah. Bitter, bitter man. Which I one? Think. Yeah. I, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I like him. I, I like, like him I already. <laughs> I like him. <laughs> um, by the way, on the Dame thing, like when it came out that he was bored, and my favorite part, lonely, in Milwaukee playing video games, I, what did you think of that? I thought sounds like Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah, checks out. <laughs> checks out. Yeah. But how can Dame Lillard be lonely anywhere? I got Let's a good stop. feeling he's found some company. He's since, found people. Since that interview. <laughs> Reggie Miller. He, well, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just gonna say Chicago's right down the road, man. You can go find some company. You know, even if it's not Milwaukee. Exactly. exactly. It's like, it's like Austin and San Antonio. Okay, yeah, stop. Mm -hmm. so, 
quick little ride. Um, Reggie Miller, Reg, Reggie Miller recently said that uh, Dame Lillard is in his top ten. Where would where would you rank Dame? Hmm. Of all time. Personally, I would have Damian Lillard in, in my top three with Rasheed Wallace and Kevin Duckworth, but that's just a Portland Trailblazer thing. Right. Reggie Miller said he's got Damian Lillard in his he top said, ten. Yeah, he said he got him in his top 10 all time. Of all time. That's big. I think it was a hot take, but you know, it, it worked. We're Wait, talking when about I read it. that, I thought he meant but top ten shooters of all I thought time. He meant he top meant ten players? trailblazers of all time. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> I thought we were all, I mean, we were all pretty stoked he made top 75 all time. And I thought that was like a generous and lovely thing to say about him. Hmm. I don't know about it. Maybe top 10 guys from Oakland, top 10 <laughs> point guard. Oakland, I the him. Oakland list is good. That's the not Oakland a bad list, list is very yeah. good. The Oakland list of point guards is amazing. Okay, so you got, you got Duckworth, you got Sheed, Clyde Drexler, Damian Lillard. Mm. Who <clears throat> of all the players in the history of the Trailblazers deserve a statue? That's good outside that arena. All right, so Clyde Drexler's kid got this conversation going amongst Blazers fans, and I guess amongst the national media too the other day. I'll tell you this for free, it's not Clyde Drexler. <laughs> Why is that? You don't, get a, you don't get a statue in front of the Rose Garden when you leave town, when you ask yeah. to leave town, and then you go win a championship for another city. That's tough. And where that, like you go into the Hall of Fame as a Houston Rocket, in my opinion, to get a statue, you either have to win a championship with a team or stay with a team for your entire career and be one of its best players. He didn't do either of those teams or things. So Dame doesn't a get a statue either then. So no statue. Damian Lillard does not get a statue in Ooh, Portland. Here's the statueless moto center. Yeah. Statueless, here's who gets a statue. You can have one of Dr. Jack Ramsey talking to Bill Walton and Maurice Lucas <laughs> all huddled up together. You got the three of them. <laughs> wow. All talking to one another. That could be a statue. Uh, I think you have a statue of the person who invented voodoo donuts. It's just a guy Fantastic holding, like, uh, holding a pink like, box. Like, uh, There's donuts. one out here now, too, in LA. Yeah. Okay, we don't They're hate everywhere. that. They're everywhere. Yeah. They're spreading. I love donuts. We, we, maybe that guy who rides a unicycle dressed like Darth Vader holding bagpipes, like, he can get a I statue. I thought he was just a crackhead That's in Portland. What... <laughs> that that be... doesn't mean he doesn't deserve a statue. <laughs> Those things aren't Fair mutually point. exclusive. <laughs> It's a fair our, point, crack, yep. our crackheads are employed. We're a whimsical city. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, ma what made you first fall in love with the Blazers? How did that start? Uh, I So I uh, went to preschool at a place called the Middleman Jewish Community Center in Portland, Oregon. And this was in the early 1990s uh, when basketball teams would still practice at places like that before <laughs> they had practice facilities. Uh, it, went, it went on so longer I than went you to would imagine. That's crazy. I bet it did. I yeah, I, 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 I practiced at, I a, at a nursing community teams. college for my first seven years of my what? career. What? Wow. Yeah. I kind of love it. Yeah. At a nursing community college? Yes. Yes. How Just specific? out there crossing up 78-year-old Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, what is it? Okay. All right. Go on. I like it. So I went to preschool there, and the Blazers practiced at that same facility. So you'd be sitting there, like, eating a knish in the cafeteria. <laughs> and, you know, Jerome Kersey and Clyde Drexler there would walk is. by. R.I.P. And I R.I.P. Yeah, gotcha. Um, and and it was it was just amazing. The town, the city has always loved the Blazers. We have two soccer teams now, but we are primarily a one sport town for most of my life. So I just fell in love with them then, and I assumed that it was a oh we go to the finals every couple of years experience for the rest of my life, and it, it has not been the case. But mm. it started like that. That's awesome. So you've been to a lot of games, obviously. Uh, also, Portland's one of the hardest, craziest fans that I, we've ever played. I They're, love that, playing it's, in Portland. It's awesome mm -hmm. playing there, especially in the postseason. My least favorite game ever, obviously, was, was when uh, that <laughs> dagger put me out of my misery. That's my worst game ever in but. Portland. What is your favorite game you've ever been to as a Portland, and what's your least favorite game you've ever been to? I'm actually glad you brought that up because <laughs> I happened to be at the game where Damian Lillard hit the shot over you. Uh, oh, no. Uh, yeah. Mm. Y'all bleed the snare that day. Hell of a shot. I, you've heard it louder in the Rose Garden than I think it's ever been in the Rose Garden before. I That's think even louder than it was. This way. He curled. Oh. Not, not, to play, not to say any names, but James Harden was supposed to switch. He <laughs> did it. And then just in the, in the statue that's going to go up front, it's going to be my little white ass like this. <laughs> it would be. That's a weird That would be the picture. <laughs> you're going to get half a statue. I'm going to be the Jalen Rose in the statue. <laughs> you are, you're going to get like a full arm. He's going to get a full arm wrong. in it's the gonna statue. It's going to be great. <laughs> you were there. That's kind of amazing that you were there for his worst. I love that. I was... 
I was hammered. I was in the crowd. I'm actually in the footage of you hitting that shot. Oh, you I can find this. me. I decided I to wear this. a tie that game for some yeah. reason. Yeah. So I'm in the crowd cheering. My arm goes up before it goes in. You knew it. I knew why you, I, he had you guarding him, so I knew it was not. It all comes out now. Okay, so what's the worst game? What's the, <laughs> like, what's the worst game you ever attended? Uh, well, not because of our burgeoning friendship. I'm going to say that, too, because I feel so bad oh, for you. Oh, that's no. nice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> See, just like that, you guys are besties. Uh, by the way, I just have to tell you, when I was 13 and the Spurs were playing the Trailblazers for the Western Conference Finals, I'll, that was the first time I sports cried. Um, and the Trailblazers, and by the way, this is before anybody here was probably even How alive. many times have you sports cried since? Probably like four, like Chris Paul, you know, game seven, a hits a three, all, those types, of, they're all Spurs related. So that complete silence, did you ever cry after like an NBA game? See? I, like I cried, I lost the state championship, that was the last time I think I cried in like yeah, a basketball game. I don't game. think I've... I think fans cry more than you guys, yeah. right? Ian, we cried, but they don't really yeah. cry. What does that mean? I think you guys care more I think, than we I think do. it means that we're not making like $20 million yeah. a year. <laughs> you guys care, the, ca the check's still cash. Yeah, right? And, we'll, like, this and is not right. lose, we booze. This is <laughs> not okay. Yeah. We discovered something about it. All right, we got to get to the podcast. All fantasy, everything, and I love this because you guys draft anything and everything, and I'm talking, it doesn't have to be sports. It can be chips, action stars, bald people, which I think is mm -hmm. amazing. Um, in the first pick in the things not to do at an NBA game draft... <laughs> I know what this is. What is your first pick? I think my first pick is leave early. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. You don't leave early. This is one that kills me, especially this season in Portland. Every game I've gone to uh, when I'm back home in, uh, in Portland, people are increasingly leaving early, and that's not what you do. Oh, that's how we need to separate ourselves from the Miami fans, the Thank Laker you. fans, Blazers fans stay. Thank you. And we yes. watch our team get beat by the Atlanta <laughs> <Hawks>. <laughs> That's fine, but you stay. Good, bad, and ugly. Um, best halftime show. First pick. All right, first pick. And this is almost a career achievement pick. I know. More I, than it is a right now pick. But it's got to go to Red Panda. Red Panda, yeah. Mm. Who's, who's Red Panda? What? Lou Williams. You know, even if you don't know Red Panda, you know Red Panda. Red Panda. Like, what's the act? The woman on the giant unicycle with the plates. Oh, that's my favorite. Where okay. she, kicks just, the, she kicks them up on her head. Michelle, and look them. at me. Do I supposed to know her name is Red Panda? Do if I a person's named Red Panda, you should I'm a little busy know. at halftime, okay, Michelle. You know what? Ian, this is, why, this is why fans and players can't get along. <laughs> Doesn't even know her name. <clears throat> no. Well, that's probably the worst thing Always about being an NBA screen. player. I've never not, met her or anything. They don't see the halftime. Yeah. We don't see it. Great point. Ian, we're going to move on to college basketball here. You went to Portland State University, yes. who uh, have zero Final <laughs> Four appearances. Uh -huh. Are you into March Madness? And who are you rooting for this year? Are you following it all? Uh, I always have a soft spot for the Oregon Ducks. Uh, but no, I just recorded my uh, a stand up special last weekend. So I've been not as in touch with March Madness as I normally am. Who should who should I be rooting for this year? North Carolina. Or uh, NC State. I North can't root for North so Carolina. So you know what's interesting about North Carolina? We said North Carolina has the average, same average age as the Oklahoma City Thunder. So I can't root for that. Like they're, they're they're like Van Wilder over there. They're like tw they're 23 years old playing college basketball. Bunch of guys getting their doctorates? What's going <laughs> yeah, on out kinda. there? Yeah, a bunch of med students. Well, that's how it used <laughs> to be back when they'd stay four years. We're yeah, just going but back. Now it's like five, six years. Seven, eight. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like COVID. you get the COVID year. You get the transfer year. You get the, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, even I've retired since COVID. Like they got to go home. Ian, <laughs> if you okay, I'll give you a team. Yeah. NC right. State has this big dude named DJ Burns. Little baby Zebo. Yeah, you and he's like he's adorable. He has a side hustle that he tells all of his teammates about, where he has vending machines and he's making just love. Yeah, because you can't root for the oh, Dukes. Oh, I like you can't, this guy. Yeah, you're going to like this up. guy. Did you Google him? He got snacks. He I is a Google full him, yeah. unit. Yeah. He's a... Easy, hey, cowboy. Hey, settle hey, down, Chandler. Hey, hey. He is God. a boy. He looks he like is. the dude is, like, cooking everybody at 24-hour fitness. So, yeah. like, yeah. that guy? He, he, looks, he looks exactly like that guy. And he's guy. got game. And he, he does. <laughs> and he's lovable. So, yes, that's the one. NC State is the one. Um, we're going to do a little Rookie of the Year here because for the entire season since day one, it's Chet Holmgren. Nah, nah, nah. That's all they talk about. And I've been obviously fighting the good Wemby fight, which will clearly be right. Where are you on this controversial debate? <laughs> I think it clearly needs to go to Scoot because... <laughs> I had Scoot as my early pick. He did that was Lou's pick. I had him as my early pick, and yeah. it didn't. It hadn't went my way. 
It 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 hasn't, but lately he's really he's he's really been playing. He's run through the rookie wall, and the rookie wall has shattered around him. Chet Holmgren. I mean, if we're being completely serious about it, it can't be Chet Holmgren. A, not a rookie. Thank you. Not a rookie. Thank you. B, he's surrounded by. I mean, if you put Victor Wembanyama in Chet Holmgren's place on the Thunder, he would be putting up even crazier stats than he is right now in San Antonio. Yep. Chet's amazing. He's great. We're we're very lucky we get to watch him in the NBA for the next. You know, 10, 15 years. But when Benyama's doing stuff already, but that makes me... But he's losing every time you do it. <sighs> he is, but it's not his fault. He, like, which, <laughs> which guy would you take on your team going forward? Thank you. No, that's not the 100%. argument. 100%. That's but the argument. argument. There's Part one guy that's averaging 17, 8, and 3 on the right. best team in the West. There's one guy averaging, what, 19? We're, we're speaking as athletes. Know, on the worst team in the West. We're speaking so as that's athletes. Our, that's our only argument is, okay, this guy's doing it on a shit team. The other guy's doing it on, a, on the best team. Well, who, do the Celtics have a rookie on their team this year? Because then we should just give it to him, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And by the way, he's surrounded by good players. He's had a whole extra year of this. Yeah, so but so did Blake Griffin. Right. He won Rookie of the Year. Victor Wimbiyama. I don't think that's he right either. He's been a pro for five years already. Oh, so now the Europe game is all com comparable. But usually we're like, well, it's not the same. It's, it's comparable to, to the kids sitting out and working out every day. And I can't take it anymore. <laughs> what I'm hearing is that we need to reach a compromise, and that compromise lives in Portland, Oregon. His name is Scoot Henderson. All right, Scoot it is. I'm good, I'm good with it. It was Scoot it to make me look like a genius. I'm down for it. It's true. Um, Play yeah. the long game. Don't worry. You're going you're gonna to get born out in five, six years when he's, when he's getting his first statue, the first statue that a current NBA player gets in front of an arena. Yeah. Scoot. Did you happen to watch the Clippers Sixers game last night and see the kill? I did. This, did you this. see this? where he just goes individually, ethers and offends every <laughs> referee, and then decides to go at their mothers, calling them all bitches. Yes, I did. <laughs> I, I didn't see the game, but I did catch that particular highlight, and then I caught it another 43 times uh, throughout the course of the evening. <laughs> oh, my God. God, I love it so I much. Mean, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Have you? Hey, by the way, you need to use this in one of your next stand-ups. Anytime you get ha like, heckled or booed, just go at them, yeah. their mothers. Have you ever done anything like this? I'm... I, uh, I, I I unfortunately have done something like that. <laughs> if, if you do it at the end of the set, it goes okay. If you do it at the beginning, it's kind of hard to get the crowd Ooh, back. I will. <laughs> yeah, timing he, is everything. An hour of awkwardness. If he captioned that and put it up on Instagram, by the way, that would be one of the bigger crowd work clips yeah. oh, God. <laughs> that I've seen before. He'd probably he'd get his followers up <laughs> real fast. Late last season, you tweeted, you would kill for Dylan Brooks. <gasps> If he were a trailblazer, why, why Dylan Brooks? You get me, Ian. I just kind of think that's the guy you want on your team. <laughs> yep. When he's on the other team, you're like, I, I hope a bear eats him. I hope he falls off a bridge. Like, any, like, you hate that guy. But when that person is on your team, out there instigating on your behalf, yes, sometimes it goes wrong. Sometimes it ends up with LeBron taking it personally and then taking that out <laughs> on your team. But that's what LeBron <laughs> does anyway. Yeah. But every, like... Fifth time, will you guys tell me, does Dylan, does a player like Dylan Brooks ever get in your head to the point where it throws off your game a little bit? No. Eh, no, he's just, he's, he's, that's, what, that's what he does. He's like a Patrick Beverly. He's, that's, that's his role, which again, you do like it when it's on your team, but when it's not on your team, it's, 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 it's cringy. It's eye rolling. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. It's cringy and eye rolling, but does it ever take you out of your game? Are you ever like, I want to hit a shot over uh, this guy? That's for the so amateurs. you take a shot you wouldn't normally you take. Wait, so you're saying you don't think LeBron's, I think LeBron remembers it and that he uses that. Maybe it's backfiring for Dylan Brooks, but. No, is that the only time we've seen LeBron go get, go get 40 points? Like, no. <laughs> I love Dylan Brooks. <laughs> I'm with you, Ian. I think he's hilarious. He's a character. I also, I just love having a villain. The yes. more characters we have, I'm you know, like, that. I like in that. the league who are just like, oh, we got this guy tonight. And then you get to watch his antics in addition to the game. I think it makes for a more uh, enriching fan experience. Oh, Draymond might be available. This no. <laughs> yeah, by the way, would you want Draymond on yeah, your team? Yeah, would you want that smoke on, in, in Portland? Not this team. <laughs> Not. Th I think he would. I think it would be a bad experience for both parties if he joined this team. But if it was the Blazers team from 2019, 2018, would love Draymond Green on that team. Damn. I mean, he's a, he is good at what he does. The you know, 61 games he's not suspended. <laughs> exactly. I think that's annoying. When's the special come out, Ian? Uh, it's going to come out sometime in June. We don't have an exact 
date yet, but the uh, the special, the book, everything drops at the same time. Good busy month. All right, we, yeah. we appreciate the time so much. Um, maybe the Trailblazers will be good in a couple years and we'll still be on the air and then we can have like a whole big party. Be great. I'll come back to celebrate when it's uh, when it's Cooper flag. Scoot, oh, and there then, it uh, is. There you go. <laughs> I like that for you. All right, we're doing and that. Franz Wagner. <laughs> Carmel, we'll be back. Run it up, they run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back like a running back. Yeah. She knowing all over the map. Very impressive. Have families, and we start with. Well, this just seems rude. Tatum mm. on Murray. Oh, the old blow. Oh, oh my God. Remove his appendix. <laughs> <laughs> That's not. <laughs> it does not count. Oh, here's the thing. You don't, it's, it's, this is nice, but you dunked on a point card. You know what I mean? Did you see his fancy uh, coach watch ad Jason Tatum's got out? He's like, got a coach? A coach? Sassy modeling, yeah. For watches? For watches. I like I he's better so. than coach. Look, I'm I not going to say anything. Better than coach. Um, what do we have here? Well, well, oh, where's the highlight? By the way, uh, oh, there it is. It should have gotten its own segment, but Mitchell Robinson's back, y'all. Oh, he is. That's a, that's oh, weird. and Gabe Vincent possibly coming back Nothing. this weekend. Don't care as much. Right. Lynn. <laughs> oh, he plays with a pistol. Understood. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How about Ant? This is two stars. This Excuse me. Great. Here you go. This was great. This and counts. the timing of this was great. Yeah, Buzzer beating overtime? layup. Come on. Mm. I feel like he maybe should have went with the floater instead of the... Huh. Well, I mean, he probably thinks that now, too. Yeah, he probably should have went anything <laughs> other than this. <laughs> anything but that. He did this better. twice, by the way. He did this at the end of regulation and in his end second overtime. Yeah, AD's on fire. Chet Holmgren. Oh, what's the, the rookie block. of the year? Of the year. Oh, oh, this is nuts. Look. Oh, Let's, not the two for I watched that a few block. times. Oh, mm. cock back. By the way, that dunk oh, was going to be beautiful. He tried to cock it there on him. Excuse me? He, he no, don't say it again. He said it the first time. Don't say it we, again. I, I, we ignored him the I first time. I didn't get the reaction I wanted the first no, time. Don't so say it again. <laughs> Moses. Oh, a Joe Ingles victimization. Hey, hey, hey. I am not here for this. Oh, no. What, Joe. he didn't even do anything. <laughs> With three in what and out. in the world? <laughs> three in and out burgers. That's old man game right there. there. Come on. That's not fair. That's crazy. <laughs> Oh great! This one's this this one's oh. for you. Oh dear, Chandler. Why? Yeah. Hey. Uh, oh, say, say that last thing. Hey. Huh. Well, hey we said this is nasty, record. but this is a possible three seconds. This is. So yeah, let seconds. me see this again. Look, one, one Mississippi. Two, two Mississippi. Three, three four, Mississippi. Quite some time. Five. Oh, check ball. Ball going the other way. That might have been a minute. Uh. uh You're right, uh, but it looks cool. Uh, so. It is nasty. Well, he's gonna keep it. Peyton second. Oh, oh. oh dear. Dearness. That's what I like. By the way, yeah, if, he, yeah, if he dunks Damn. that, he can't block it. And Steph Curry is part Look of the Steph clip. Look at Steph get out of the way. <laughs> Look at Steph. Yeah. Right, I know. Steph thought Martin. he was going to dunk That's it. That's a great business decision, Steph. Yeah, that was, was good. LeBron James. Ooh, that, that court. LeBron oh. on Scottie Pippen Jr. Ooh, it's like Inception. Mm. Everything's coming together. Jr. Is that court supposed to look like yeah, this? Is we, some, yeah, we, yeah. Or something happened to us. Vaudevillian why court looks like platinum. That? I hate it. Platinum is what they call it. I mean, no, I'm sorry. I love it. I don't want Memphis. I actually I think I like it. You guys. It, I feel like they did something. You're part of the gang now, They like Michelle, sepia the video. Memphis is going to get you. They, they love this show. Me. Oh, this was is. nasty. Oh. Yes, oh, sir. that's not that's that's Uncle Jeff. I hate you, that that's Uncle Jeff. You can't do Uncle, that. Uncle Jeff, you don't do that. You don't uh, do that to Uncle Jeff. You need to respect or even out of the hash either. So you got it. Yeah, you don't you don't do that to Uncle Jeff. Oh my Oh God. dear, that was intimate. I don't love that for him. That made me sad. <laughs> that made me sad. Lou's man. sad. We've lost Lou for the next oh, 12 minutes. Oh jeez, man. Get out the way, Uncle Jeff. I kind of respect that he yeah, you know what? You know how many people he's punched on. That's he's fair too. To, yeah, he tried to do the right thing. He tried to Get on the uh, damn on the film clip. Goodness gracious. That was yeah. I watched that over. I feel bad watching it over and over again. Let's stop playing it. It's, mm. It seems rude. Uh, yeah. We'll take a quick break. Come back like a little this. more. Run it back in a moment. Well, we got some Rockets thunder for you. No SGA. Rockets beat OKC 132-126 in overtime. Oh. Ten hey, straight, Jim. baby. Jalen Green. Jalen Green's a new man. <laughs> 37 points, 9 rebounds, 7 assists. Why do you look at me when I say that? Josh Giddy, by the way, we haven't spoken of him uh, lately. 31 points. Chet Holmgren fouled out. Am I, on, with him? Am, I, am I on fire right now? I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't do any of these things. Chet Holmgren fouled out with 9 minutes left in the fourth. Um, Damn. But I Why do you even throw that in there? 
it just seemed like a fun stat. I don't know. <laughs> rookies a, of the year should not, not fell a, out. It's not a great place for Chet Holmgren. I'm just gonna say. Uh, this show or in this game? Yeah, yeah. I'm not a hater. If he was any other Bad year, I'd, I'd be all about you. Chet. Can we talk about Tari Eason? Who exactly? But he's out for the season, and he posted <laughs> a video <laughs> last night. No, like watch this. Why would you do this if you're Tari Eason? Because it's this not is, a good, this it's is not, not a good smart. Move. He's Especially chanting. he's out for this. Warriors, <laughs> come out to play! Warriors, come out to play! Yeah, it's like that. Like that. It's not like that. This is why. I... Why is he doing that? Your I whole team's know, trying he's so young. hard. He's, he's putting, young. Yeah, he's, he's putting pressure on some guys that he can't even help. He is really doing that. This is just the ex small example of a team that's just like not that's tequila. ready. I, I know not, tequila yeah, when I see it. I know, I know tequila and toxic when I see it. <laughs> and that right, I speak it fluent. I don't he hate the, the trash talk, but it's just the wrong message. But you're not also, even playing. It, and it's also, you're not it's playing your offense season, person. and you you still are currently the 11th. You're not, you don't have No, it. but, I mean, they are hot. They're hot. They They're are hot. hot right now. I and I actually argue. like his game, too. I, they uh, are hot. Okay, yes, yes, yeah. they, capital T. Uh, Jalen Green. Jalen Green is hot right now. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Go on. What are we seeing from Jalen Green? Is this his star turn, officially? We're seeing a lot of points. We're seeing them play a different style with Sangoon out now. They're playing faster. He's got the ball in his hands more. And even last night, you know, 14 for 24, 37 points, 10, 10 rebounds, you 7 assists. It. That is a complete <laughs> game. And he has had this potential ever since he's been coming up into the draft. He has had that star potential. He has had a player to possibly build around. And now he's showing it without Sangoon. I hope he finds a way to have that attack and that same mindset when he's back because those two together should be the core of this team for years to come. But this has been a great opportunity to Me and Lou always talk about this team is playing loose. They're playing free. When Sangoon went out especially, there was zero expectations. This is okay. What yep. pick are they gonna get? They're out. The war. The the those four teams: the Kings, Mavs, Warriors, Lakers. They're gonna be in the fight. They're literally one game <laughs> behind these guys. And the Warriors, they clearly have a bunch of distraction and a lot of other stuff going on. This team's balling right now. I know SGA and I, is out last night, but this is this is the most impressive streak to me of all this the entire season this all year right. with this team. Winning the games, their season, their schedule has been a little light recently. It's going to get harder, but this is the best team in the Western Conference without their best player. Fine, but they still went on the road and found a way to win a game as a young team. I'm excited about it. I think he's found something that works for him, confidence-wise. He's motivated. You know, he's he said publicly he's motivated by his family and everything that's going on with him, and it's and it's working. Over 10 games, he's looked like the Jalen Green that we've all. <laughs> Y'all can't do this to me. I'm not doing any, I'm not even looking at you. <laughs> like, but he looks like the Jalen Green that we've all come to really enjoy and the, the expectations that we've had for him. It is kind of nuts that I, they it's are. It's crazy I was nuts. on screen by myself. I know, style. I know. <laughs> Say nut again. Look. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, we go. Did you get superpowers almost, when you made all, a child? We almost made it out. Did you guys get superpowers? <laughs> oh, you went I, did, I did. I did. Did you? I was remember really asked because he yeah. credited. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back.